And a good crowd has made their way to Irving. Uh, I would say about equal on both sides, the amount of yep. people that have come from Wichita Falls and those that come from Stephenville. I'm guessing this crowd, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of around 10,000. Stephen will be in the all-white with the navy headgear. Hershey in the all-red with the light blue headgear. Boy, this, this first uh, five or six minutes is going to be real telling in this football game. Getting ready to kick off is Raymond Flores. He approaches, and the kick is away. It is a pooch kick that will be taken by O'Neill at the 20. He's up to the 25, makes a move at the 30, and goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Bank of America first quarter is underway as the Stephen Yellow Jackets will begin first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Glad to have you from Texas Stadium in Irving. John Hollinger boots it. Steve Ross on the sideline. It's Round two gets underway. I do want to mention uh, what our uh, Steamboat Parks and Recreation uh, Department uh, athlete of the week this week, Zach Hunter, who uh, had a great week last week. We'll look for number 10 to have another one this week as well. Jackets start out in the no huddle offense. Trips to the near side, one to the far side. Browles is in shotgun with Hunter standing next to him. Snap back to Browles. Giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter cuts up to about the 33-yard line. Maybe the 32 is only the gain. A gain of one on the play. Steamboat will have second down and nine. As Boots told you during the uh, starting lineups, three of that front four, all seniors, all played uh, last year. You'll, re you'll remember especially number 77, Brian Paul, your six-foot, 250 senior. He had a pretty good game last year, and he is one of the two techniques. And then the other guy is uh, Botello, who is a sophomore. And it is legitimate, 250 pounds, as you look at Collier there at the defensive tackle position. He's a big lad. Second and nine, Browse under center, straight drop for him. Looking across the middle, now Browse will run across the 30, cuts up side, 35, gets to the 37, 38-yard line. Browse will be about three yards short of the yardage needed for the first on the quarterback keeper. It'll be third down and three for Stephenville, a very short three, but that is the need. They have to get just outside the 41-yard line, and he is just outside, almost to the 39. Looked like they were trying to swing Zach Hunter out of the backfield, and he was well covered. And uh, that must have been the first and only option because Kendall didn't look long before he took off. T.J. Douglas was also on a crossing pattern on the drag. He was open momentarily. Browse is under center, one back behind him. Handing off over the left side is Hunter. Hunter has enough for the first down as he powers his way to the 44-yard line. It was a power look on the left side. And credit Doty, Doty, Bahanna, Collier, and Keggins for getting that first down. Especially the two Dodies, they ended up on top of each other down there, and uh, they blew a big hole open. And and, uh, and also credit Zach because he was he was hit at the line of scrimmage, and as you said, searched for for about three more after he was hit. Also Haney and Sanotsky getting big blocks as well. First and ten for the Jackets. They're back to the no huddle offense. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Browse again in shotgun with Zach Hunter standing next to him. First and ten at the 44-yard line. Faking the ball, no giving it to Hunter across the 45, after the 46, 47, up to the 48 yard line, a gain of about uh, four, four and a half on the carry. It'll set up second down and around six for the Jackets. Just underway here from Texas Stadium in Irving. Stephenville zero, Wichita Falls zero at the 9.55 mark of the Bank of America first quarter. First drive of the game. Stephenville now has the ball at their own 48 yard not line. Only, not only is Zach Hunter a good runner, he's a smart one. He just loaded up behind big Brian Keg in 6'5", 285 and followed him through the hole on that play. Browse is in shotgun. Four receivers to the near side, one to the near side. Flags are down as some jackets advanced up the hill before the ball was snapped. That time Hunter came in motion to the near sideline and set up behind the three wide receivers. It was going to be a straight down the line shot pass to Hunter who had the three blockers in front of him. But Stephenville will lose five yards on the penalty and it will set up second down and 11. That was a good part of the game last week against Andrews. You remember what? Three, I believe three penalties is all. Uh, and it was that. almost like one in the first half. Yeah. So uh, play mistake three in the playoffs and you are going to you're going to win in advance. Second and 11 for Stephenville. Now four receivers split to the near side, one to the far side. Browns is under center. Throwing the fade pattern up for Douglas. Douglas goes up there, makes the catch, and then goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. T.J. Douglas used his 6'5 frame to go over the top of, I believe that's 80, Corey Mack. We'll wait to see if they know it's number 8, not 80. That is Jared Franklin. The quarterback is also, quarterback is also starting at quarterback. It is 19 yards on the reception to D.J. Douglas on just the high fade pattern to the one back at the 37-yard line is Stephenville. 
Boy, that was a great play. Biles pitched to the near side. It is Hunter trying to get to the outside. 35-yard line. He will be run out of bounds right there. A gain of about two. A late hit. No flags. You can hear the Stigma fans yeah, doing a little bit at the end of the play. Yeah, Zach had gotten stood up and uh, driven out of bounds and had his back to the defense. Looked like a little extracurricular there at the end, but uh, as you said, no call. It was pretty close. Not even as good a spot as I thought. Only the 36-yard line, so a gain of one on the play. It's second down and nine from the Hershey 36-yard line. See a little of that speed there trying to get outside, and they could not quite get the corner sealed. So Zach had to go out a little further than he wanted to. Browse under center. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Now Hunter goes in motion that same way. Browse, straight drop, setting up, stepping up in the pocket. Makes one man miss. Now another. And throwing across the flat over the top of Douglas. TJ was open at the 15-yard line, and Browse with a little bit too much steam on the ball put it way over his head. He was open but just could not quite put it there. Maybe a little bit of adrenaline on that throw. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if he was going to throw to Avalos, who was uh, breaking down the far side line. And uh, he was open as well at the 10. So it's now third down and nine for Stephenville at the 36-yard line of Hershey. First drive of the game, 9.08 to go here in the Bank of America first quarter. Browse in shotgun. Long snap count, rolling out to the far side. In some trouble, now he'll try to escape and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Hershey with a stunt on the way that Riles was rolling out. It'll be fourth down at the 40, but a flag is down at the 35-yard line. Let's wait and see on the call. Dylan Triggs, that defensive end. Boy, you saw the speed of him, 6'4", 220, senior. He got there in a hurry. This flag will be against Stephenville. Let's wait and see what the call is. Well, they'll erase it. This is personal foul face mask against Stephenville, who was playing offense. They may take that penalty. Well, I think I would get him out of field goal right well, you're already back at the 40, so you're talking about a 57-yard field goal right now as it is. Oh, yeah, that's true. So the penalty is declined, and it'll be fourth down, and at the 40, you would expect Stephenville to go for it, yeah, and they you. will. Fourth and 13, Stephenville will go for it. That's I'm taking that 15-yard field Jackets will line up in the swinging gate. Riles in the middle of the field by himself with O'Neal at center. Yeah. Right back to the near side. All the linemen on the far left side. Snap back to Browse. Riles rolling out, looking to throw deep. He'll pump fake once to try to get around the corner. 35-30 and then run out of bounds at the 20. Oh, they'll spot him out the 31-yard line. Yeah, he stepped out. Just he, got out of the reach of uh, Josh Cameron, the uh, outside backer. He, if he slides by him, he may have scored. He tried to tightrope the sideline and stepped out at the 31. If he does not, he does get the first down. It will turn over on downs about three yards short of the yardage needed. Wow. So Hershey will get the ball at their own 31-yard line. How about the swing and gate on the first series, baby? <laughs> That's why I love the playoffs. First and 10 for the Huskies at their own 30-yard line, 31-yard line. Well, that wasn't a bad decision. You don't probably make much more than that if you punt. Franklin under center, Robinson and Estes in the backfield. Courtney Smith is the wing on the right side. Now Smith comes in motion the near side, picks back to Smith. That's a 30 up to the 31, 34, 35 up to the 37 yard line. A pickup of about six on the play. We'll wait for the spot. Did you notice that time, Boots? Uh, they had Jilson playing an uh, outside, uh, like a stand up defensive end. And uh, that was right the side that uh, Hershey ran to. So good scouting there. Moving Jilson outside, and he made the tackle. Almost seven on the uh, carry. It'll be second and a short three for the Huskies. That's a 37-yard line. We're back into the conventional 4-3 now. Jared Franklin under center, the two backs behind him, giving the ball on the right side, in some trouble, trying to get to the outside. He will not. He will not even get back to the line of scrimmage. It's Jared Estes as the Jackets do a wonderful job of stringing Estes to the sideline where he had to then decide to cut back into the teeth of the defense, a loss of about one. And just as I said, that conventional 4-3, they go, uh, they walk two more guys up, so it ends up being about a 6-3 front for them. What a spot. They will even credit him with a yard. I had him tackled back at the 35-yard line, and they'll spot him out to the 38. So it's third down and three for the Huskies at their own 38-yard line. They must get past the 41. Jared Franklin again under center now sends Estes in motion. Estes will go to the far side and will try to cut up. He will not get the first down. Stuck at the line of scrimmage. Jacket defense holds. It'll be fourth down, and the Huskies will be forced to punt. 
Let's see, was that uh, Fanning? I believe it was. Yeah, and I've also got Scott Lee over there on the corner as well. Fanning is the one that walked up and uh, helped turn it back inside. And boy, just not much there on the old uh, wing T offense. 7 one and counting of the Bank of America first quarter. Huskies on their first series three and out are forced to punt. Back deep for the Jackets are Phelps and Bryle standing around their own 27 and 30 yard line. Getting set to punt is Hunter. Snap back to him and the kick is away. It is a wobbly kick that will come down at the 30, take a huge roll and Phelps will take it at the 20. And he will be hammered down at the 20 yard line. 41 yards on the kick and no gain on the return at all. But Stingle does take over at their own 21 yard line. The defense does hold, does their job in the offense. will trot back out onto the field. Great play by Fanny. Boy, if he doesn't if he doesn't catch that on the first hop, that ball rolls all the way down by the goal line. Or Phelps. Did I say Fanny? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, Fanny doesn't return punt. But that's all right. First and 10 for the Jackets at their own 21 yard line. O'Neill and Bashaw split to the near side. Douglas split to the far side. Uh, Hunter is at a wing back on the left, and Matkins is in the backfield with Bryles under center. Matkins goes in motion toward Hunter's side. Inside trap handoff. No, a keeper by Bryles. Fake to the outside. 30 across the 35, 40, 35 across midfield, and is run down at the 41-yard line of Hershey. Hershey bit on the inside trap, and there was no one around Bryles until he got about seven yards downfield. A good head and shoulders dip to the inside, and then he took it to the outside and made 37 yards. The quarterback on the far side, who I believe is the quarterback on offense, Jared Franklin, really bit on the head and shoulders fake on the inside to spring him for the deep run. And, of course, uh, a lot of that depends on not only the quarterback, but the running back and the offensive line boot selling that, uh, that trap play up the middle. Great play by uh, Kendall, Zach, and the offensive line. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Hershey 42. Split to the near side. A pitch is Hunter. Cuts it inside. Down to the 35 to the 34-yard line. A gain of about eight. It'll be second and short for Stephendale. Inside the 35-yard line, they'll actually slide at the 34, so about eight yards on the carry. Well, and if you're, you're Stephenville, obviously you want to stick the ball in the end zone here because you're having no trouble moving the ball. And whenever you do that, obviously, you want to move it, move it, move it, and then stick it in the end zone. That takes a little bit of the fire out of the belly of that defense. And as, as jacked up as those guys were when they came out, I know uh, Coach Browse would love to score here. Stephenville with already 68 yards rushing in the game. Browse. Play action, rolling to the near side, in some trouble on the naked bootleg. He will barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a call. I bet the Steamer coaching staff wish they had back because they had Bryles' naked bootleg to the near side, and there was two red jerseys unaccounted for who stayed home and really hammered Bryles. It'll be third down at about three. Michael uh, Botello making the stop for the uh, Huskies. Miguel Botello, excuse me. Yeah, and uh, that's just that's what you want your defensive end to do, stay home, and that's exactly what he did there. Third and a short three for the Jackets. Bryles under center, handoff over the left side. Hunter, he will not get back to the line of scrimmage or barely. It'll be fourth down and two, and Brian Collier stuck that up, the defensive tackle up the middle. Yeah, Collier runs off the field, you know, shaking his hands, going, hey, I made a great play, and the coach said, yeah, you got to make another one, get back out there. Fourth down, Steve Mill will go for yeah, it. They're not going to punt or kick from here, buddy. Steve Mill needing uh, just under three yards for the first. It is fourth down, 438 fourth down. counting here in the Bank of America first quarter, 0-0 zero, zero our score, Steve Mill. Need to get to about the 32 of the Hershey Huskies. Haney, the one back behind Browse under center. Browse on a keeper is in a lot of trouble, and he will go down at the 37-yard line. It looked like Browse wanted to fake the dive and throw a quick hunt pattern. It was not open, and so the ball will go over on downs to Hershey. Well, there again, moving the ball in between uh, the 30s and uh, not able to get it into the end zone. Stemo with the exception, Johnny, of the swinging gate would you say has been very conservative on offense on the play calling? Yeah, and that's the neat thing about this team. They never panic, never get in a hurry. There's a lot of football to play. First and 10 for the Huskies at their own 37-yard line. Giving on the reverse, going to Estes. Estes across the 45, gets across midfield, breaks a tackle, gets down to the 41-yard line of Hershey. Late, Late flags coming down, and they'll move this one down to about the 25-yard line. Stephenville guilty of missed tackles back around midfield, and that's why they're going to be cost with the penalty. They had to make the late tackle at the 41, and then other players piling on. We'll move this one to the 25 at Stephenville, and all of a sudden, the field position battle is in the favor of Hershey. Now that ends up being a 37-yard gain after the 22-yard run by Estes. And, hey, uh, you can credit Estes on those missed tackles. He was just doing 360s all the way down the field. Every time somebody hit him, he'd spin. 
that is the dangerous part of the Hershey backfield. Once they get in the open field, very hard to bring down, very elusive. The ball is spotted at the 26, so it'll be first and 10 for the Huskies at the 26, and now the Steeple defense will be in the sun looking at the Hershey Huskies who are now coming out of the shadows into the sun themselves. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Jared Franklin under center sends Estes in motion. Give up the middle. He'll go down to the 22-yard line. That is Reggie and Robinson, a gain of about, about four on the play. They spot him at the 22. Second down and six. 348 and counting here in the Bank of America. Very quickly moving first quarter. Yeah, this is, of course, where the defense blow up and make a stop. Keep them out of the end. And nothing else. Jared Franklin under center, two backs behind him, one wing on the near side. Coming on the dive, it goes two across the 18, down to the 17 to the 16 yard line. I believe that was Robinson again. It is close to the yardage needed the for the first, and four, Reggie, Robinson. Reggie Robinson making the uh, the carry is doing something we haven't seen a lot of backs do this year, Johnny, and that's once he hits the defensive front, is really powering forward, getting the Yellow Jackets moving backwards. It is third down and one. Obviously, they're in four down territory here now, so uh, Stephenville needs to make two stops here. Jared Franklin brings the Huskies to the line, two backs behind him. They are Robinson and Estes. Courtney Smith is the wing on the right side. Franklin under center, giving the ball over the right side. A first down and more to the 10, down to the 12-yard line is Robinson, I believe, again. Yes, it is. Robinson has had the most effective runs up the middle. It is a first down to the 12-yard line. Robinson in the game, three carries for 14 yards. Estes, three carries for 22 yards. And Smith, one carry for seven. Well, this only the uh, second drive. Wichita Falls went three and out in the uh, the first series, had to punt. Then after the big 15-yard penalty down in the red zone against the Yellow Jets. Franklin under center, one back behind him this time, giving the reverse on the near side, coming Smith down to the nine-yard line. Jackets doing a good job staying at home, specifically Gordon Carroll and Monk making the stop. A game of three, it'll be second down at seven. Monk leans over and says something <laughs> to him at that point. And, uh, well, I tell you, you, you got to play your assignments, don't you? Yes, sir, pay attention. It's complete misdirection for the backs. All crisscrossing. With that speed, all you need is just a one seam. One little seam, and you're in the end zone. Second and seven from the jacket nine-yard line. Franklin under center, pitch to the near side. Coming is Franklin down to about the five, and he's tackled at the four-yard line. Excuse me, Reggie Robinson. Robinson tackled at the four. He'll be about two yards short of the first down. It'll be third down and two from the four. And the thing about this drive, by the time the Huskies snap the ball, we'll have under a minute and a half to go. Great tackle that time by linebacker Cal Gilson to keep him out of the end zone. Looked like uh, Robinson was going to, he stopped, let the defense run by him, and then sprint to the end zone. But uh, Cal Gilson would have none of that. Big third down now. Third down and two from the four-yard line of Stephenville. 0-0 zero, zero our score. Stephenville and Hershey. Hershey's Jared Franklin under center with the two backs of Robinson and Estes behind him. Pitching back to Estes. Estes cuts inside. We'll get close to the goal line. Touchdown. Well, that was just great up front blocking for Wichita Falls as the uh, Boy, there are huge holes and seams being yep. formed in the jacket defense right now, and it is not a big offensive line. This is strictly scheme on the blocking, which is hurting the jacket front. Well, the offense is just going to have to answer. That's all there is to it. Getting set to kick the extra point, Courtney Smith. Straight ahead toe kicker. Snap back. Flag is up. Flag is down. The kick is up, and it was good or not good. We have dead ball. Illegal motion against Hershey. They will be forced to kick again. Well, he has plenty of legs, so it shouldn't be a problem, but you never know. So they move the ball back to the uh, almost the eight-yard line. Now you can see why these uh, coaches were talking all week about being a little nervous about playing this football. The thing. officials marked a six-yard penalty. That's cracking me up. It's between the eight and the nine-yard line. But the kick will still come from the 15-yard line for the extra point. 
Snap back. Hold down. Kick on the way. It is up, and this one is no good. He pushed it to the far side. The penalty hurts the Huskies. With 107 to go in the Bank of America first quarter, Wichita Falls, Hershey 6, Stigma nothing. Back in one minute on KSTV. Getting ready to kick off for the Huskies. That's uh, Raymond Flores. A lot of coaching and talk being done on the jacket uh, coaching staff for their defense. Be interesting to find out what all that conversations were about because you've got about four coaches over there going over a tremendous amount of technique and scheme. End over end height. Pooch kick will be taken by Gunn at the 18 yard line. He is up to the 20. He fumbles the football. It's loose. And Hershey gets on at the 27-yard line. Just a situation of Gunn not taking care of the football. He fell down, and the ball goes over to Hershey as he just flat dropped it on the ground, and the Jackets are in big trouble. Well, I get to play defense again. That last scoring drive, seven plays, 63 yards, took three minutes and six seconds, 16 seconds. Estes on the four-yard run. That scored somewhere rough by well, somebody asked me earlier today, they said, how can Steemel lose the game? And I said, well, if Steemel decides to turn the ball over a bunch, that's probably the only way. And so far, things working in the way of the Huskies right now, who lead 6-0 with 57 seconds remaining in the Bank of America first quarter. And after the fumbled kickoff return, Huskies have the ball back at the Stephenville 26-yard line. Jared Franklin under center, one back behind him. Giving the ball to Robinson. Robinson gets to the outside. 25, 20 to the 15. A cutback stiff arm to the 10 down to the 8-yard line. Great play by Monk to keep him out of the end zone. You see the speed of Justin Monk is getting outside, making him turn back inside where the rest of the defense could catch up, but uh, not after about a 17-yard race. Reggie Robinson gets down to the 9-yard line. This is a Wichita Falls Hershey team that struggled somewhat in district play had three games decided by three points or less, and if any of those games had gone for a loss of the wins that they had, they would not even be in the playoffs today. Jared Franklin under center, two backs behind him, giving to the sweep on the near side. Coming to the 10, inside to the 5, touchdown Jared Estes. Took two plays. Steve Will defense right now is having all kinds of trouble with assignment. This is not a lot of things that Wichita Falls from a strength standpoint is doing to beat Stephenville. Will they go for two here? I believe they probably will. I think I would. It's easy as I just moved <laughs> the ball right then. Two plays to go 20, 26 yards. Stephen will finds himself in a hole now 12 to nothing with a two-point conversion upcoming. So Jerry Franklin is under center, one back behind him. Going for two, giving the ball to Robinson. He'll be stopped short of getting in. Only got to the four-yard line, even lost. So the two-point conversion is no good. Nice tackle by Harmon on that play. And we go to the break with 23 seconds left in the Bank of America first quarter. Seconds remaining in the Bank of America first quarter. Johnny, the last uh, scoring drive. Well, two plays, 26 yards, took 33 seconds. Ask us again on the nine yard run. I brought to you by Barnes and McCullough. Hey, I want, I'm anxious to see that. Well, I'll come back to that. Flores with a kick. This one will be taken by O'Neill at the 18 yard line for the 20, 25 across the 30. Keeps his feet cut back 35 at the 37 yard line. It is the strategy of Hershey to hit the pooch kick right into the sun, and it has been effective because Steamboat had trouble watching the ball come down to them as O'Dell did a nice job, however, to shield his eyes with his hands to watch the football come in. First and 10, Steamboat at their own 36. I'm going to be anxious to see that uh, fumble by Brady Gunn on, uh, on film again. It looked to me like when he went down that he slammed the ball down on the turf, and as you know, the ground can't cause a fumble. On the kickoff, we had offsides against Hershey. Hershey was offsides, but Steve Will decided to take the ball right where it is. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And uh, remember, uh, one of the things coaches told us, they got to eliminate the big plays for Hershey, and so far they have not done that in this game. First and 10 for the Jackets. They send four receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Bryles is under center by himself. 
Straight off the ball, going out into the flat. Has Hunter. Gets a block across the 45. Midfield cuts back at the 45, down to the 44-yard line. A great hookup from Browns to Hunter right down the line of scrimmage. And three blockers, his receiver, set up the block nicely. 20 yards on the reception. And as soon as they spot the ball, that will finish the Bank of America first quarter. You've got to get the chain set. I don't think Steeple will probably try to get it to the playoff. They will not. The Bank of America first quarter does come to an end. Wichita Falls, Hershey 12, Steeple nothing. We're back in one minute by KSTV. by Cook Lumber. This score in at the end of the first quarter. It is Brownwood 14, Weatherford 7. First attempt for the Jenkins at the 44-yard line of Hershey. Browse under center play action. Throwing out the flats for Mackens. Cuts out to the outside. Makes one man miss across the 40 down to the 37-yard line. A pickup of seven on the play. Great job by Mackens to break an open field tackle. Second down and three. First quarter numbers for you, Stephenville 65 rushing, 40 passing for a total of 105 first, four first downs. For uh, Hershey, 81 rushing, no passing, total of 81 yards, three first downs. Uh, time of possession for Hershey, 6.04, so they have the edge there as well. So it's second down and three for the Jackets at the 37 of Hershey. Trailing 12-0 in Stephenville here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Snap back to Browse, giving the ball inside to Hunter. Hunter will get to the 36, a one-yard gain. It'll be third down and two for Stephenville. This is the point on the field where Stephenville on their last two drives has stalled out between the 30 and the 40-yard line. Have had no trouble getting it to this point on the field. But once they get inside the 40, Stephenville has found it hard to run the football and have been not successful on passing plays either. Third and two for Stephenville. Browse under center. Hand off over the left side. Great hole. Getting the first down is Hunter to the 29 to the 28 yard line. A pickup of about seven yards. It'll be first and 10 for Stephenville at the 29 yard line of Hershey. Boy, you said it. Uh, that was a, uh, a big hole as uh, Hunter didn't even get hit till he got down to uh, inside the 30 yard line. He carries 28 yards for Zach Hunter. Been the uh, low to the offense so far for Stephenville. Browse again under center with a power look. Now they split out of it. Four receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Browse under center with one of the backs on the far side is the wing back. Coming is Browse. He's in some trouble. He'll make one man miss. Try to get to the outside. Will not make the other miss. It is tackled for a loss back at the 31-yard line. Stephenville faked the inside dive, and it's just like Hershey knew they were going to fake it. Had people waiting for Browse. Well, it was like Andrews last week. It's not that they know it. It's just that those guys were playing good assignment football, and... Uh, they have, they have obviously scouted that and see, seen that that is a big play for, uh, for Stephenville. Staying home, playing like you're supposed to. Second down and 12 for Stephenville. Ball back at the 31-yard line. 10 20 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Wichita Falls, Hershey 12, Stephenville nothing. Browse under center, play action. Setting up, looking to throw. Has a receiver open. The ball is under thrown. It's caught. What a catch by Evans at the one yard line. It was way under thrown, almost like Brown slipped out of his hands. Evans did an incredible job to make a move, stop his feet, come back and make the catch at the one. It'll be first to go to go Stephenville at the one yard line. Yeah, and the uh, defender on that play was at number 10. I think it was, it was 10 for them. I Coral Hunter, and uh, that's why if you're playing defensive secondary boots, you turn and try to find the ball because he just ran by. Cody said, I'm going to stop right here and catch the football. You go on. Both players were looking into the sun. Great job by Avalos. Browse under center, straight ahead dive for the quarterback. We'll get to the one. No. Inside the one, down to the goal line. 
No signal yet. Touchdown, Stevenville. It took a long time to call it. The signal finally takes a bite out of Hershey. It's 6-12 now for the extra point upcoming at the 9.52 mark of the Cook Lumber second quarter. And the reason I said no, the official on the near side who, who finally indicated it was a touchdown, he was running like to a spot that was going to be at about the one foot line. And then when he got there, he saw that Kendall was laying on the stripe. He said touchdown. <laughs> that was interesting. You've been working on that line all week. Well, well, and that was well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Even Elsa getting set for the extra point. Patronus will have the hold. Doty with the snap. Snap back. Hold down. Kick is on the way. It is up, and it is good. With 9.52 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Welcome back. Stingle getting ready to kick off. Britt Virgin will do the kicking for Stingle, and why not tit for tat? Hit the pooch kick right in the sunlight and make them have to return out of the sun as well. Absolutely. That last scoring drive, seven plays, 64 yards, took 221. That brought to you by Farm Bureau. Browse on the one-yard run for the touchdown. Virgin getting set to kick. High pooch kick to the near sideline. Coming up, this is in trouble. He hits the ground. It's up for grabs. Stevenville may have gotten on the football. We'll wait and see. Uh, it bounced three times, and Hershey came away with the football. Oh. Amy was right there, and then it went over his head, squirted to the near side, and they fell on it at the 31-yard line. Oh, that, oh was, that was a great play. That was almost just exactly what happened to Stephen a while ago, or it would have been the same result. It's like Hershey got away from it like it was a punt, thinking, yep. well, let's just get away from it. It bounced twice on the carpet, and then there was a big scramble for the 31. Hershey does come away with the football. Well, this is our Red City Superstore uh, giveaway. We can hold them here. Hand off to Robinson. Robinson will be stacked up by Harmon, who drives him back after a one-yard gain. It'll be second and nine. You know, they've... Uh, They've done very well, I thought, they being uh, Hershey, in the uh, first quarter of moving between the tackles. Uh, again, I did not think they would do that. I didn't either, and I, I don't think uh, a lot of these female coaches did as well. But as you said, it's just good technique blocking. And, but you've got to think, they, if they're going to make a living today on the running game, they're going to have to get outside. Second and nine for the Huskies at the 32-yard line of their own. Franklin again under center. Play action now faking the reverse and going to the outside is Franklin. He's in a lot of trouble. Gets sacked all the way back at the 26-yard line. They fake the reverse. Stingle did not bite on it. And coming up with Scott Lee initially, also with Gordon Carroll to make the tackle back at the 27-yard line. A loss of about five. It'll be third and long for the Huskies. <laughs> and uh, who was the back? Was it Robinson that, that faked inside? Yes, and then they faked also to Estes on the reverse. I didn't, I didn't see who it was. Now there's going to be a timeout. We'll come back to it. Hershey takes a timeout with third and 15 upcoming. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Third down and five, Franklin under center, giving the ball, faking on the reverse, throwing across the middle, has a receiver, Tyler is holding, almost picked off. It'll be fourth down and 15, and almost making the pick for Steven, was it Scott? Yes. Yes, Jeff Scott at the 45, went high in the air to bring it down, could not quite hold on to it. Steven would have had the ball at the 40 if he holds on. He does not, however, and it, but it does bring up fourth down for the Huskies. They'll be forced to punt, and now Browse and Phelps will get to return this ball and do not have to look back into the sun and through the roof. By the way, that was a great timeout by uh, head coach Danny Edelman, because uh, you could really feel the momentum has swung. Hershey getting set to uh, punt. Danny back at his 15-yard line gets the snap, and the punt is away. End over end kick will be taken by Browse at the 41-yard line, trying to come to the near side. Gets a good block from Harmon. An inside move. Now the flags will come down. 45 across midfield. Inside 45. Another good block. 40, 30, coming 20. Knocks out of bounds at the 18-yard line, but it is no matter. This one's coming back. Oh, and Steve Rose called a good one there, baby. And a late flag again. Hershey, 15 yards, too. But it's offsetting penalties because of the flag back at the 43-yard line. But it's a dead ball foul. It should be. He's way out of bounds. Well, that's a good call as well. Now Browse is arguing, what are we going to do? They called this on Harmon, and I thought he had a great position on too. the block. I did, too. Um, 
Steve Ross. He's right there. He's listening in. Wait a minute, Boots. He's going to listen in and see if that's going to be a dead ball. That's, I mean, it was way out of bounds, so it should be a dead ball. All right, Stevie, we're coming to you. What did the officials say in front of you? In the back, back at about the 45. I think they're going to. The we don't name players. Name players. Yeah. 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 So will you add 15 yards after they mark off the penalty? I do believe so because that's a dead ball. I think you have to mark off the. I think they'll spot it at the spot of the foul. Yeah, and then do the do and the 10 yards and then. It is a block in the back. Is that 10 or 15? Uh, 10. Okay, so Steamer will get five yards additional out of the deal. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they'll have it up uh, somewhere around the 47, 48 yard line. Let's wait to see how they mark this one off. Well, credit I, I, had, I did not look at the very end of the play. I look back. What happened on the sideline? It was right in front of Steve. He can tell you. All right. They have the 10-yard penalty against Hershey. We'll move the ball back to the 32, and then they will have the dead ball and move it past the 42 up to the 47-yard line. Steve, I know you were right there. Yeah, after Kendall went out of bounds, he took a shot right in the mouth from a guy well, right in the face mask, and the official right on and called it. Another good job that time by Mike Copeland. He talked to his defense after that last score. You know, sometimes he pats him on the back, and sometimes he pats him on the back. That time he patted him on the back. He told him good job on the extra noise stopping him there. There was a lot of football left to be played just to remember their assignments. I think the only real adjustment he made was to get his defensive ends up the field and force the issue a little more. All righty, Stevie, appreciate that. Boy, the PA announcer is loud here at Texas Stadium, isn't it? Yeah, and I just kind of frowned at him, and he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> First and 10 for the Jackets at their own 47-yard line. Stegman trailing 12 to 7 at the 8:21 mark of the Cook Lumber second quarter. Browse under center, giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter, great move inside the 50, 35 at the 40, keeps his feet 35 down to the 34-yard line. A pickup on the play of 18 yards. It'll be first and 10 for Stephenville at the 34-yard line of Hershey. Yeah, he didn't get as good a spot as I thought he was going to get the 32. They said his knee touched down at the 34. And boy, what about some, how about a little misdirection of your own there, uh, Stephenville Yellow Jackets? And, you know, as I said uh, a moment ago on that timeout by Hershey, you could tell the uh, momentum had swung a little bit. If Stephenville can go now, stick this one in the end zone, the, uh, the swing has been completely swung. Browse under center, one back behind him, giving the ball to Hunter, finds a little seam, across down to the 31-yard line, a pickup of about three, almost four. That one almost broke for a lot more, but it will be second down in between six and seven. This score from Shotwell Stadium, Weatherford has come back to take the lead on Brownwood, 21 to 14, that in the second quarter. Wow. So as a big turn of events have happened here, certainly the same thing out in Shotwell Stadium in Abilene. Wonder how many touchdowns Pierce has in that game. <laughs> <laughs> he probably has all three. Yeah. Second down along six for Stephenville, just outside their own third, excuse me, the 31-yard line of Hershey. Matkins comes in motion to the near side. Browse inside trap to Hunter. Down to the 25-24. He fumbles the football, but the officials will say yeah, he was yeah. down at the 24. Good call. That break goes the way of Stephenville. It will be enough for the first down. And, and probably the most telltale sign that he was down is that there were two white jerseys standing around mm -hmm. after the play and just yeah. watched the ball bounce around because sure. I think they were as confident as well that the ground mm -hmm. caused the fumble. Well, now you see uh, Hershey's defense a little on their heels, Boots. Is that a big offensive line really moving people out in the center of, uh, of the field right now. And the Stephenville beginning to win the uh, line of scrimmage here. 19 points scored in this game so far, all into the same end zone that Stephenville is trying to punch into right now. Bryles, first and 10, in shotgun, throwing out to the flats, has Douglas. Douglas outside the 20, down to the 19, to the 18-yard line. A pickup of about six for the big rangy wide receiver. Didn't it seem like it took forever for that pass to get over there? <laughs> it was like, hurry! <laughs> you can just see somebody's uh, stepping up and picking that one and going the other distance. It's second down and four for Stephenville. Ball just outside the 18-yard line. The uh, Hershey defense having to look back into that sun through the roof here at Good. Texas Stadium. <laughs> Handoff over the right side. Hunter finds down to the Ooh. 15, and then he is hammered at the 15. Really got turned backwards by uh, Quincy Robertson, six foot, 180-pound uh, linebacker for. No, I say that he's a defensive tackle for yeah. Hershey. So it'll be third down and a long one or a short two, depending on how you look at it. Ball is two. Yeah, just outside the 10-yard line, and Stigma must get to the nine. Actually, 15. 
just outside the 15-yard line, excuse me. Browse under center, two backs behind him. Giving it the first back through. That's Haney inside the 10, down to the 6, to the 5-yard line. The big fullback gets the first down for Stephenville. It'll be first and goal to go from inside the 6, 10 yards for Derek Haney. Man, they weren't expecting that. They uh, they all bent on the toss fake, and uh, Haney just ran the belly dive play right down the middle. And, uh, you know, Derek's done that the last uh, two or three weeks. Expect Steamville to stay with power, and they will. Only one back split to the far side. Tight end look with a wing back look. Rowles under center, two backs behind him. Once again, giving it to Haney across the goal line. Puts down Derek Haney from six yards. Stephenville retakes the lead, 13 to 12, with the extra point upcoming. Looks like Stephenville came back to the exact same play, just running the fake to the other side. Or sitting, I'd say the fake to tailback to the other side. And boy, it was just great up front blocking. If the defense can keep their momentum going, this game will uh, definitely swing the way Stephenville wants it. Stephenville's going to have to call timeout, Boots. Didn't have enough time to get the uh, extra point off. We'll take a 30-second timeout with them. 13-12, Stephenville back in 30 seconds for the extra point right after this. Thirteen to twelve, our score. Extra point upcoming for Stephenville. Johnny and I just going over the possibilities of should you go for two in this situation or not. Well, if you don't make it, and then you score another touchdown, you're at twenty, and then they could go for two and tie you. I have an interesting question: Do high school and college kick extra points from a different line of scrimmage than the pros? Look where the pros line up for the extra point, and look where they're spotting the ball. Yeah, with three and the two. Did not yeah. know that. Tell you. Well, certainly learn every day. <laughs> and it was a football thing, so that's a good thing that you learned. Thank it. you. <laughs> Stephenville will go for two. Twins yeah, to the far side, twins to the near side. This would give Stephenville a three-point lead. Bryles is in shotgun. Oh, man, what a formation this is. Now three receivers to the far side. His gun goes in motion to the same side as the three. Bryles rolling out that way, looking to throw into the end zone. Caught two-point conversion is good to Brady Gunn. Steamer will extend out to make the score. 15 to 12. second quarter after the last jacket scoring drive Johnny almost a mirror of the first one seven plays 52 yards this time took 253 Haney on the six yard run and the two point conversion to Brady Gunn was good makes it 15 7 Stephenville that scored summary brought to you by Walmart Vision Center also want to thank Scott Osmond attorney at law for a cash donation to Erath County Meals on Wheels Virgin high end over end pooch kick will be taken at the 25 yard line coming to the near side and then a great tackle is made by Lee at the 25 yard line no gain on the return. You know, here's something that's kind of gone unnoticed, probably maybe to uh, fans and even broadcasters. But what a great job Scott Lee has done all year long on special teams. I don't know how many tackles he has alone on special teams. But, you know, as a sophomore playing on the varsity level for the first year, he has really done a great job. I don't know if he's still considered sophomore experience once you're in week yeah. two of the playoffs. Excellent point. But you're still talking about a 15, 16 year old young man having yeah. a great Saturday afternoon. It's first and 10 for the Huskies. Franklin under center on the misdirection, giving it to Smith. Smith across the 35, makes a move, cuts to the outside, and is tackled at the 42 yard line. We see the wing back trap reverse, and now a late flag comes down at the end of the play, and this may be a face mask as well. 11 yards on the carry, and Seeing the late hits and face mask against Steamboat at the end of the run is an indication that Stephenville is feeling a little bit like they've got to reach out and grab these players because yep. they're getting by them so quick. You're exactly right. That will happen. That is a face mask against Stephenville, as you said, at the 513 mark. You certainly don't want to give them any life going into halftime. You'd like to see three and out, get the football back, and try to go score. But at the least, keep them off the scoreboard before exactly. the half. Exactly. That runs it up uh, almost to uh, midfield now. 47-yard line is the spot after the five-yard face mask penalty. At their own 47 out of the Huskies, trailing Stephenville 15 to 12. Now under five minutes to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Franklin is under center with Robinson and Estes behind him. 
giving the ball to Robinson. Robinson will be stacked up at about the 49. A gain of two on the play. It'll be second down and eight. Greg Parks, the first man through that time, and then uh, Jilson came in to, uh, to help clean up after, as you said, just about a two-yard gain to the 49 of Hershey. 443 and counting in the Cook Lumber Man, second quarter. This game, 15. May, this game may be over by 330 if we keep this up. Huskies 12. Under four and a half now to go in the first half. Franklin again, two backs behind him who are Robinson and Estes. Smith is the wing back on the right side who comes in motion to the far side. Giving the ball on the inside trap is Estes inside the 45, inside the 40, to the outside 30, 25. 20, 15, 10, cuts back, is out of bounds, however, at the 12-yard line. And so that's where Estes will be brought down. It was simply a uh, the counter or the draw out of the counter, if you will. 39 yards, and the Steamville defense is having a lot of trouble with the misdirection going on in the backfield for Hershey. Well, all they did there is just miss the ball carrier. I mean, they didn't see who had the ball, and he, he, had, the, he had three or four choices of a direction to go. Well, credit the offense of Hershey for coming right back after giving up two touchdowns in a row to Stephenville. We've seen some shootouts for Steve Miller in this place before. Today may be another one of them. Franklin under center. Once again, the two backs behind him. Pitch back to Robinson. Robinson to the outside, to the 10. Makes a cut at the 5. Gets across the goal line. Touchdown. No outside containment for Stephenville. It's a containment. Got sucked to the inside. 12-yard run for Robinson, and Huskies have, of Hershey have retaken the lead, 18 to 15, with the extra point upcoming. And it didn't take long to do it. That's the good part of it for our Stephenville. They'll have four minutes to, to go in the half to come back and regain the lead. What's the most number of points Stephenville has given up in the first half this year? 14. I would guess this is it. Yeah. I believe 14. Getting set for the extra point is Courtney Smith, who missed his last one. Franklin is the holder. That drive, just to your right, barely took a minute. Smith getting set, snap back, hold down, kick is on the way, it is up, and it is good. Hershey getting set to kick off again. That last scoring drive, only four plays, 74 yards, took a minute and 22 seconds. Robinson on the 12-yard uh, run. PAT good. That makes uh, Wichita Falls 19, Stephenville 15. That scoring summary brought to you by Loopies on the South Loop. Watching the defensive coaching staff during that last timeout was very interesting. They were talking to their players about stop being so aggressive on the line and that you need to hold up the offensive man in front of you and read and react instead of trying to be aggressive off the ball because Hershey's just running right by you. We're going to go to Steve Ross right after this play. After the kickoff, Flores getting set to kick. High end over end kick will be taken. The deep man is gun at the 15. He's up to the 20, cuts to the outside a little bit after the 27, 28, almost the 29 yard line, holding two hands on the ball. Steve Ross will study you. We'll wait till the PA guy gets through. Uh, right. Would you echo those sentiments about what the defensive coaching staff was saying? Yeah, you got great ears, because that's exactly what they're saying. Now, you may need to get security down here, because Mike Copeland said we're going to go to a single stab. <laughs> oh, gosh. That sounds ugly to me. I know what a double stab is. That's where they send both tight, or both defensive ends up the field. We'll see what a single stab is, uh, I guess, on the next defensive series. Thank you, Steve. First and 10 for the Jackets at their own 29-yard line. We'll hope that's in the third quarter. 3.57 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Steve will 15, Wichita Falls Hershey 19. Brow sends Matkins in motion to the far side. Delay handoff to Hunter. Hunter stood up as he gets to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10, 350 in counting. Stephenville has scored on their last two possessions, Boots, and uh, they do have some momentum going on offense. And they, uh, on those last two possessions they scored on, you'll recall they were getting them in big chunks. The, the yardage, that is, they're going to have to do that here as they're 70 yards away from pay dirt. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Browse is in shotgun. Or in this case, the blue carpet. Which is the end zone. Really? Thank you. Second down and actually nine for Stephenville. Trailing 19 to 15, 320 in counting. Browse in shotgun, snap back to him. Looking to throw in some trouble. We'll try to escape, and he'll be brought down all the way back at the 27-yard line. The ball is loose. No, they'll sure. say that uh, he was down by contact at the ground. A loss of about two to three on the play, and it'll be third down and 11. 
Well, it's been feast or famine for Stephenville today so far. Yeah, good point. Third down and 11 for Stephenville. By the way, that is the fourth sack in the game for Wichita Falls. Mm. Twins to the near side. Browse is under center, one back behind him. Play action. Browse setting up, looking to throw. Out in the flats, over the head of O'Neill. It was oh. tipped by the linebacker just over the head of O'Neill. If he makes the catch, it will be enough for the first. It's fourth down, and Stephenville, barely taking a minute off the clock, will have to punt right back to Hershey. And they better be careful here. I think you better punt this ball out of bounds. Courtney Smith back deep for the Huskies as O'Neill gets ready to punt. Most points so far this year, Steamwell's given up in the first half was 17 to Cleburne. O'Neill waiting on the snap. High snap, but handled. Kick is away. High, high spiraling kick that Smith will take at the 35. He fumbles the football. It's up for grabs. Steamwell's got it at the 37 yard line. I believe, yes, Stephenville does get the football. Smith, Smith tried to come up and get the ball. It bounced off his knees, and the Jackets get back at it at 36. We'll wait and see. I think it was Haney. Oh, right? There's who has the ball. It is Jilson. Jilson. Cal Jilson with the ball at the 37. 35-yard punt and just a, a big, big mistake for Wichita Falls. Brownwood 28, Weatherford 21. So just as their game flip-flops, so does this one. Brownwood retakes the lead. That game in the second quarter, but Steamville with a huge break. First and 10 at the Hershey 37-yard line with 2.25 to go here in the first half. 19-15, Hershey on top. Browse in shotgun. One man to the near side. Browse on a direct draw by himself. Will cut up at the 35, get down to the 34-yard line. A gain of three on the play. Long plays that take a long time to develop. We're going to have a tough time working against this Husky defense because they are so quick at reacting to the football. Yeah, they're going to go to the hurry-up offense, so Jay Doty just uh, couldn't get out of the way of Kendall that time. Second down and eight for the Jackets, almost to the 34 of Hershey, 157 and counting. Trips to the far side, one to the near side. Browse is in shotgun with Zach Hunter standing next to him. Giving the ball to Hunter, inside down to the 30. No, Browse will keep it himself. 25 to the 20, down to the 15, to the 13-yard line. A great fake to Hunter, and Browse kept it himself. He scoots it around the outside and picks up 21 yards on the carry. First and 10, Stephenville at the 14-yard line. Faked out myself yeah. easily. I, uh, I was noticing I'm going, it's up top, boot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great fake uh, by Hunter and uh, Kendall as well. Can I go for the excuse we're a long ways from the field? Well, it's it's applicable here. Even though you saw it, though. Browse yeah. under center. Two backs behind him. Giving it to Haney. Inside the 10. Keeps his feet to the seven-yard line. The big fullback on the dive. Gets about six to seven yards to the seven-yard line of Hershey. Of Steamville 119 and counting. I think Stephenville may burn it. No, Hershey's going to burn a timeout, Boots. 19 to 15. Hershey on top of Stephenville. Hershey takes a timeout. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Now three carries, 23 yards, and one touchdown, and that might be open again because they're really keying on the Hunter and Browse. Ball is just at the seven-yard line of Hershey. A late substitution for Stephenville as Gunn comes in. Gunn will split to the far side. Browse under center, second down and three. Giving the ball to the left side. It's Hunter. Hunter gets down to the one to the goal line. Touchdown, Stephenville. Stephenville has retaken the lead, 21 to 19, with the extra point upcoming at the 111 mark of the Cook Lumber second quarter. And if I could only ask for one other thing, could we have taken all the time off the clock? <laughs> really? Well, here, here you can, um, here you can kick the uh, the pooch kick, and get the fumble recovery, and score again. Going for the extra point is Stephenville. Even Nelson getting set for the extra point. 
snap back. Hold down. Kick is on the way. It is uh -oh. up and it is good. But Hershey has uh -oh. jumped off sides. This will, for two. this will move the ball inside the two-yard line. Do you go for two and get up by four, which means Hershey kicking a field goal would not give them a tie, or do you take no, the points? they want the points. They want the points. It is declined. Stephenville, 22. Hershey, 19. 111 left in the second quarter. We're back in one minute. At the 111 mark, we have now had the fourth lead change of this game as Stingle's extra point was good to extend it 22 to 19. Extra the uh, kickoff for coming. Johnny, last scoring drive. Four, four plays, only 37 yards. Took a minute, 1,400 on the seven-yard run. The uh, PAT good. That makes Stingle 22, Hershey 19. That scoring summary brought to you by Farm Bureau. Boots, uh, Stephenville now scored on three possessions in a row. Three out of five for each team on their possessions in this first half. Getting help with the uh, fumble off the kick was Hershey. High end over end pooch kick will be taken at the 29 yard line and then tackled at the 35 yard line for Hershey. In fact, uh, both of us, uh, both teams scoring after those uh, sure. fumbles. One on the kickoff for for Stephenville and, and then on the uh, punt that Hershey uh, gave up just a moment. Ago. And importantly, you should note on that, Stephenville did convert on their extra points off of the turnover touchdowns. Hershey did not. Yep. Two, uh, two extra points and a two-point conversion. That's the, uh, that's the difference in this game, the three points. 22-19, Stephen on top of Hershey. 106 remaining in the half. The Cook Lumber second quarter. Hershey with the ball at their own 33-yard line. Their last drive barely took over a minute. Steamwell defense will try to keep them off the scoreboard here before the half ends. Franklin on pump fake will throw it out in the flat. High over the head of the intended receiver, Courtney Smith. And Johnny watching right there. We see why Hershey does not throw the football a lot. Why in the world would you throw it there? It took you a minute and 22 to score last time, about the same distance. You've got a minute six, now a minute one. And they just did not look good in the passing offense right well, there. Well, that's just two passes a game now, right? Well, he, he throws six, but only completes about two oh, a game. Oh, okay. I got you. So 0 for 2. So I'm figuring he's got four more passes. Can't even. That's it. <laughs> and he's about on schedule for that. Three and a half. Jared Franklin uh, is under center. One back behind him. Twins to both sides. The one back is Robinson behind him. Going out in the flats. Caught by Estes. Estes will be tackled short of the yardage unit for the first down. He's at the 40. It'll be third down and four. And does Steve want to take a timeout or do they want to let the clock keep running? Well, they want it to keep running, but I'd like for them to take a <laughs> They don't want to give them any more time to run the football. The outside backer, was Cal Gilson split to the outside that time? I believe that's right. He almost had a chance to pick that football off. You know, if uh, if he had thrown an incompletion there, you know what was going through my mind? It was last year's state championship team when, uh, game when Lamarck did the same thing and gave us the ball back. Third down and four. Jared again under center. Motion to the far side. Play action. Jared looking to throw. Being chased. Throwing out in the flats. The ball is dropped and a flag in the backfield. It would have been plenty for the first down. Would have been Reggie Robinson, but the yeah. ball goes through his hands. But I don't think it would have mattered anyway because there's a flag back in the backfield. And not, the, not only would it have been plenty for the first down, he'd have, he'd have got six. Holding okay. against Huskies. We'll take the ball. Well, it'll be fourth down upcoming. Yeah, we'll take the ball right here get uh, a chance to run uh, uh, a punt back and possibly uh, maybe one long play. Well, with 16 seconds left, I don't think Hershey wants to think anything at all about either going forward or any kind of oh, fake. No, no, no. Penalty is declined, so it'll be fourth down and four for the Huskies at their own 40-yard line. Oh, you know that, well, they, with only 16 seconds left, that's the only option for Stephenville. Remember, Stephenville does have two timeouts remaining. Are they going to send Kendall? Kendall was trying to go back, and the coaches were like, no, you're not going out there. Getting set to punt. Oh, they're not even going to return Hunter. it. They're not even going to return it, Boots. Seymour's not going to take any chances as they come for the block. It is almost blocked, but it goes out of bounds, and that's oh, why. Thank you. The ball was punted out of bounds. If they'd kicked the ball straight, there was no return man. The ball would have bounced around for a while, and probably the 10 seconds would have run off. Instead, the ball is kicked out of bounds at a bad angle, 18. and Seymour gets the ball at the 42-yard line of themselves their own only 18 yards on the punt steamer with 10 seconds can probably get with two timeouts left two quick passes if you will and then trot the the field goal unit on 
I think I'd send 25 out on a long pass play. Yeah. To get into field goal range, Steamville needs about 30 yards. Or maybe run this little deal to TJ. Maybe that's what they're going to do over here on the near side like they did a moment ago. Well, the guy head up on him is Toral Hunter, who's only 5'11". Douglas is 6'5". Browse will send Hunter in motion to the far side. Straight drop for Browse. Browse is in some trouble. He'll be sacked all the way back to the 32-yard line. Bashaw was open, but a big rush came upon Browse. He had no chance to get the ball away, and that will end the first half. Steve Moore will go in at the half at the end of the Cook Lumber second quarter with the lead. To HD Comp Internet Service, providing the uh, streaming of the audio. You can hear the game at KSTV. .htcomp.net. We are underway as Virgin High end over end pooch kick will be fair caught at the 26 yard line by Tory Tony Jones. So the Huskies not taking any chances uh, the way they handled the last pooch kick. Yeah. yeah, good, probably pretty good advice. And that's where the Huskies will begin first and ten. So it may be interesting right from the get go to see how the defense responds after having a half to talk about keys and assignments on how much better they will play against this misdirection offense by the Huskies. Well, and as you said, you know, they, Stephenville is uh, well known for, for adjustments at halftime. Texas Bank third quarter is now underway. Stephenville 22, the Huskies 19. Hand off over the left side, Robinson. Robinson will be stood up momentarily, then he spins out of the tackle mm. to about the 29-yard line, lost his feet, gain of three on the play. It was stacked up at the line of scrimmage, but he spun off of the initial uh, hit. And that's what we're seeing a lot of the Husky backs doing, Johnny, is that they're not coming down with first contact. Well, and that was just a great play by Reggie Robinson, who uh, who should have been stopped back at the 26, as you said. Did that complete 360 spun, got all the way up to the 30-yard line. So it's uh, second down and a uh, short seven needed for the Huskies. Franklin under center. The draw play coming to the near side to Robinson. He got the seam, and then he's tackled at the 39-yard line. Enough for the first down. Ryan Harris out making the stop. Not before he got 10 yards, though, and uh, great play by Ryan. And, you know, as you said, uh, just as we're coming back from halftime, if uh, there's fans here in the stadium and you want to, you've been a little confused in the first half by all the misdirection, as the coach has said, just watch the guards. They'll take you to the football. That's exactly what they did on the last two plays. First and 10 for the Huskies at their own 39-yard line. Just underway here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Franklin under center. Play action now giving on the far flats to Estes. Estes makes the corner, and then he's hammered at about the 40-yard line by Harmon, who was trailing the play. Coming up from his cornerback position was Jeff Scott to stop him momentarily at first. A gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Following up on that theory, uh, Chris Coleman, the uh, the right tackle, that was really easy to figure out. He aimed, he lined up, aimed to the left. <laughs> it was easy to figure out which direction they were going that day. Second down and nine for the Huskies at their own 40-yard line. Just underway here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Stephenville 22, Wichita Falls, Hershey 19. Franklin under center, two backs behind him. Play action, rolling to the near side is Franklin. Franklin looking to throw it here. Hammers back at the 30-yard line by Cal Jilson, who almost took the helmet off of Franklin back at the 30. And once again, we see the ineptness of the passing game for Hershey. And I asked the coaching staff of Hershey, why do you even try to throw the football? Well, you got to you got to change things up a little bit. That, that wasn't an ineptness of the passing game. That was the tenacity of Cal Jilson. You're right. I, I guarantee you, Franklin's going, Coach, do not call that play again. Oh, man. Boy, he I, got manhandled. He was lucky to get up off the turf as hard as Gilson hit him. Third down and 19. Inside the 31, the Huskers, the uh, Huskers. Yeah, them too. Hershey Huskies must get to the 49-yard line of their own. Franklin under center, one back behind him is Robinson. Here's a draw play to Robinson. Robinson will be stacked up and will be stopped at the 32-yard line. Cal Gilson along with Parks as well to make the stop. Also coming up, Feltz from a strong Ooh. safety position, and it'll be fourth and long. <laughs> Look at Craig Barks when he gets up. He says to number four, come on, I'll, I'll take some more of that, brother, if you want to bring it. Hey, that's why you that's why you throw the football boots, so you can uh, run that draw play a little bit later. Because as uh, Jay and I were talking before the game, he said, you're not going to throw it. How effective can the draw play Good be? Good point. So the Huskers will be forced to punt. Back to punt is Tony Still the Jones. Huskers, huh? God, I'm, out of, I'm stuck on that now. They are not playing in this game. It is the Huskies. Punt is away. Spiraling kick will be taken by Feltz at his own 30. 
trying to make a couple moves, gets to the 30, and that will be about it. Good downfield coverage by the Huskies, and it'll be first and 10 for the Jackets. Three and out for the uh, Jacket defense after the 38-yard punt. Stephen will quickly back now on offense. Well, they'll start at the 31-yard line, and uh, that's exactly what we talked about at halftime, Boots, that uh, the Jackets would want. Hold them three and out, try to go down and score, go up two scores, and then you've, uh, you, then you've got something. You force the uh, Huskies into a situation where they may feel like they have to start throwing the football a little bit. Steve Look how much time they took off the clock on three plays. Three minutes and ten seconds. Wow. How could you do that? The referee's not spotting the ball real quick, is he? Ooh. 8.50 to go here in the Texas Bank third quarter. 22-19, Stephen Long top. Handoff over the right side. It is... Hunter out to the 35. He stumbles forward for about three to four yards. Well, they'll spot him at the 34. There was a seam there, but just somebody just got a hand on Hunter's foot, so a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. If Zach Hunter was a, an all-state 300 hurdler, he'd have scored right there. <laughs> he needed to go over the top of some large bodies, and he almost did on That's his right. Lead. He almost did. You're exactly right. Browse under center, two backs behind him. Wing back on the right side and a split receiver on the far side. Now the tailback Hunter goes in motion to the far side. Browse on a keeper. We'll go across the 35. Cuts inside across the 40. 45 across midfield. Flags down. Uh, this one will be coming back. It would have been a big game for Browse and a first down, but it will be a flag back at the 43-yard line. Boy, that's tough to see. 20-yard run, but it's going to be all almost... It's all going to be wiped out plus a couple. Holding against Stephenville, and boy, that's a flat, that's a penalty that I don't even think Browse needed to have happen because I think he had already passed the uh, position of where the foul occurred. You're exactly right. He had. The spot of the foul would have been at the first down marker, mm -hmm. so Good. they'll spot it from the 42-yard uh, line and back the ball back to the 32. So instead of a first down, it'll be second down at about nine. So I think Kendall's going to get about, what, seven, I guess? Yeah. We'll give him seven. And then uh, take ten away. Oof. Boy, that's a big play. Yeah, because you've got the ball all the way down into Hershey, uh, into the field, what, about the 47, I think it was? 45 yards of penalties against Stephenville in the ball game. This is the last week they had barely any. Quads to the far side, one to the near side. Browse under center. Going the deep fade pattern up for Douglas. Douglas will go high into the air. He's hit, and the coaching staff wants a penalty big time, and they will not get it. Boy, the coach got bumped, but he was going for the ball, so that's probably what the official is going to say. It'll be incomplete. Ooh, we're lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Why is the coaching staff from Hershey out on the They want an interception. They thought he intercepted that one, but he didn't. He hit the ground. But from over there at their angle, they thought he had intercepted it. Corner on that side is Toral Hunter. He's 5'11", and they're trying to throw the deep fade or the high fade on the sideline to Douglas to go 6'5". It'll be third down and nine for the Jackets. 7.45 to go here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Browse is under center, one back behind him. Double wing back split to both sides. Play action, Browse setting up in some trouble. Now we'll look to escape. We'll get to the outside, across the 30, 35, first down, 40, 45, and out of bounds about the 48-yard line. Kendall Browse, the gamer that he is, stayed in the pocket as long as he could, saw there was nothing open, then goes 15 yards on the scamper, made a couple people miss at the line of scrimmage, and it is a first down for Stephenville. And Johnny, how many times this year have we seen in third and fourth and long situations that Kendall back in shotgun or dropping back in the pocket has nothing and then makes a couple of people miss behind the line of scrimmage, then escapes for the first. Okay, let's see. There was the Broward game, <laughs> the Cleaver game, the Granberry game, and the Andrews, Andrews game. game. This will be the fifth. And uh, great blocking that time by the offensive line as Kendall had a lot of time back there. First and ten for the Jackets. Handoff over the left side is Hunter. Hunter gets to the midfield stripe. Again, a three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Seven and a half to go in the Texas Bank third quarter. Signal 22, Wichita Falls 19. This is a game that is uh, moving right along, as you said. Uh, Stephenville got the ball with 8.50 to go in the uh, third quarter, so they've now run off uh, a minute and a half. In the third quarter, Weatherford has pulled within seven. It's now Brown with 35, Weatherford 28. Second and seven for the Jackets at the midfield strike. Hunter goes in motion to the far side. One back is behind Browse. He will take the handoff. It's Haney, 30, 35, 30, 25, 20. The big fullback runs over a player, 15 down to the 12-yard line. Derek Haney has had a whale of a game. 37 yards for the big fullback. 
You better pay attention to the big fullback today, boys. What a great call by Coach Bryles. That'll put him over 50 yards rushing today on just the four carries, I believe. 60 to be exact. Four carries, 60 yards for Derrick Haney in his most productive output game of the year. An, arm, an, uh, an attempted arm tackle at about the 40, and <laughs> Derrick said, no, nah, it's going to take a little more than that. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Hershey 13-yard line. Pitch to the far side is Hunter. Hunter cuts inside, gets down to the 10-yard line, a pickup of about three. It'll be second and seven from the 10-yard line. Stephenville uh, moving the ball to the far side of the field now as they get to the 10-yard line, as you just mentioned. Opportunity maybe to set something up back this way or just let Haney blow right up the middle again as Derek comes back into the game. Kendall has not completed a pass yet on this drive or in the second half, I should say, but now it would probably be a pretty good time for one. That would be this drive. Thank you. Second half. Thank you. <laughs> Both of those the same together. Browse under center, two backs behind him. The tailback is Hunter, comes in motion to the near side. Giving the ball straight ahead to Haney again, inside the five, down to the four-yard line. Man. Boy, not a very good spot, though, as the official on the far side will say he's down at the five. So it'll be third down and a short two needed for Stephenville. Five yards on the carry after the spot. Boy, and I think we just got to keep hammering it right here. Well, I think it may be hammer time. Nope, they're going to go with a well, I don't regular know. set. Haney is in the game, and so is Sanotsky and Tate, so it's a double tight end yeah. look. Yeah, because uh, Zach's in there as well. I think you might uh, see Kendall maybe run with it here. Oh, it's there. Kendall under center, handing off on the left side. Big hold to the goal line. Touchdown, Zach Hunter! Stephenville extends now 28 to 19 with the extra point upcoming. Stephenville, power football between the tackles, has made that drive scoring touchdown possible. Stephenville has scored on a one-yard run to Browse, six-yard run to Haney, a seven-yard run to Hunter, and now a five-yard run with to Hunter. Eben Nelson getting set for the extra point. Doty with the snap. Back to Patronus, hold down, kick is on the way, it is up, and it is good. Hershey 19, Johnny, last scoring drive. Now that's an impressive drive after holding Hershey three and out, overcoming the big penalty on third and nine. They go nine carries, I mean nine plays, 69 yards, and took 334 off the clock. Hunter on the five-yard run, PAT good, 29-19. That's scoring summary brought to you by the Walmart Vision Center. Virgin tie, end over end, pooch kick will come down at about the 28-yard line. Up to about the 35-yard uh, line is the return man for Hershey, and that's where Hershey will begin first and 10 at their own 30. Well, they'll bring out the 37-yard line is the spot. And that's uh, that's not a bad little trade-off. I mean, you only have to go 63 yards, but that's better than uh, taking an opportunity maybe to allow them to break a big one. Well, you don't kick any of the deep, dangerous people, and that's been the philosophy of the coaching staff, and I'm sure they'll stick to it the rest of the game. Huskies on their second offensive drive of the second half. Franklin is under center, pitching back, cutting against the grain and finding a seam to the 40 across the 45 and out of bounds. I should say, or did he? Yes, at the 43-yard line. That was a situation where Jarrett Estes took a pitch to the near side. It was designed to go to the near side, and by himself, he cut against the grain and went all the way back to the other side, and the containment could not keep up with his speed. The 20-yard carry goes to the 43-yard line. Jilson was in great position as the backside contained man, but Estes did a big circle all the way around him, and I don't think there's much you can do to defend against that much speed. You know, Jeff Scott, uh, fortunately, over there as well to help him, or he does get around the corner and go score. First and 10 for the Huskies at the 43-yard line of Stephenville. My, how big is the 10-point cushion right now? 4.57 to go in the Texas Bank third quarter. Franklin under center. Taking the ball to Robinson to give it to Smith and then tackled in the backfield by Jilson at the 47-yard line. A loss of about four on the play. Jilson stays at home, and this time he does find someone coming right at him. Courtney Smith on the reverse. It'll now be second down and 14. 
Man, uh, Cal having just a great football game, and I know uh, I know he's got folks that listen uh, along the internet up in uh, is it Lincoln, Nebraska? Yeah, it's Lincoln, Nebraska. I see Chief <laughs> Ross down there shaking his head. Is there another Lincoln? That's all. I know. <laughs> I know they had good uh, success in the first round of the playoffs. Did Dallas Lincoln? Oh, I got you. Thank right. you. Yeah, I got you. Franklin under center. Play action. Looking to throw across the middle. Has a receiver. It's up and it's almost intercepted. A great Ooh. play by Gunn to go high in the air to take the ball away from Estes. But Gunn has not come off the ground yet and now he stands up. He went to the ground hard and <laughs> was that a Harmon that went flying through the air trying to disrupt that pass? I think it was. Brady a little slow getting up. He really took a lick. Boy, he is a little bit confused right now, and I think they'll bring Bryles out on the field to play free safety, and I don't think you lose anything there as you get an all-state free safety from last year to come in this year and play for a little bit. Boy, Gunn is in some discomfort as he comes to the near sideline. We have the score. Weatherford has picked off the pass, took the ball back, and has scored again to tie the game 35 apiece in the third quarter. It shot well against Brownwood. Franklin, play action, looking to throw out in the flats. Almost picked off by Phelps. Went through his hands, but was in great position to keep the ball away from it. It'll be fourth down, and the Huskies will be forced to punt. Well, Boots, uh, looks like Stephenville's going to get the ball back again. We'll get uh, Steve Ross's over there checking on Brady right now. He might have just had the wind knocked out of him because he went way up in the air and landed down on his uh, shoulder, his back. Right on the turf, and you know that uh, hurts a lot more than just on natural grass. You know the old expression, taking one for the team? That's exactly what he did, because he went up tall to knock that pass down. It looks like they're working on his back right now. They are a gun. So back to uh, punt is Tony Jones for the Huskers. Huskies, excuse me. Punt will go out of bounds uh -oh. at around the 25-yard line, and that's where Steve will begin first and 10 after the 22-yard punt. Well, the Jackets have done, the defense has done the job. Hey, Boots. Uh, One first down in the first two drives. Going back to the first half. Hershey's uh, uh, Huskies have gone three possessions in a row, three and out without scoring. Stephenville has scored on their last four possessions. Mm. Going back to the, they finished out the three in a row in the first half. The medical staff still working on gun on the sideline, and they appear to be massaging part of his upper back. We'll go to Steve Ross here in just a moment. First play for Steve, the first and hit their own 25. Riles is under center, throwing the quick hitch, going to Bashaw, makes the cut, 40, loses the football, and they get it. Does Hershey, I believe, or does Steve get back on it at the 40? Let's wait and see. There was a big scramble for the football. Matkins was the one that took the catch, excuse me, had stripped at the 41, and then there was a big pilot for the ball at the 40. Stephenville comes away with the football at the bottom of the pile. Let's wait and see who fought at the bottom to go get it. Matkins may have gone back and gotten it himself. Oh, he did. Yep. Matkins has the football. Ends up being a 15-yard reception, and Jeremy, uh, the defender, just ran by and reached in and grabbed that away from Jeremy. And because that's... you're right, because Mackins was already past him and looking for more yardage. He was behind him and just reached under his arm yeah, and popped it out. out as he, he was going by the defender again. That was a great move that he made at the 35 to get upfield. Big you with us right now? I am. We have the Cross Timbers Orthopedic Injury update. Good news on Brady Gunn. Boy, that was a violent collision. I saw his mouthpiece shoot about 20 yards in the air. Dr. Bill Evans said he just came down on his back, and it's a muscle strain of some muscle. I don't know what he told me, but, you know, <laughs> lumbar or something like that. But uh, there's no danger of anything wrong to his spine. There's no tenderness there at all. It's just a muscle strain, so he may be back. Bryles on a little bit of a busted play, gets down to the 42-yard line. He looked like he wanted to counter out and give to his fullback. The fullback had already gone through the hole, so Bryles said, heck, I'll tuck it under and get behind Haney's tail side and then take it up for seven yards. It's nice when you can bust one and go for seven, isn't it? <laughs> busted plays for seven yards, I think, uh, might be added to the playbook, if you will. Well, Hershey looking uh, a little confused right now on defense boots. That, uh, and a lot of the reason for the confusion is the way the offensive line is dominating this football game right now. 29-19, Steve Malone top, Bryles under center. Now Hunter in motion to the near side. 
giving the ball to Haney. Haney gets inside the 39 to the 38, and that is enough for another first down. I believe now they'll spot him back down oh at the 39. That's they'll, have to, they'll have to measure this one. Oh, boy, it looked like he was almost to the 38, and they will spot this one outside the 39, and the officials will have to measure. And if he gets this one, it's just by the nose of the football. Well, this has been a fairly quick quarter in itself. Here we are at uh, straight up 3 o'clock on KSTV Dublin, Stephenville, and Granbury. And Boots, I tell you, uh, this is exactly what I think the Stephenville coaches hoped would happen. Three and out, go score. And then if you're lucky, you get the ball back three and out again. It is a first down by the nose of the football. That's a pretty good view from up here. Steve Mill is 7 out of 10 on third down conversions. At the half, wow. they were only 3 out of 6, so that is wonderful. Converted on all third downs yeah. here in the second half. First attempt for the Jackets at the 39-yard line of Hershey. 29 to 19, Steve Mill on top of the Huskies. You have to realize Steve Mill at one point in this ball game was down 12 to nothing. It's seconds to go in the first quarter. Riles under center, two backs behind him, two receivers far, one to the near side. Handoff over the right side. Hunter finds the seam, cuts inside, 35, down to the 30 to the 29-yard line. Very close to the yardage needed for the first. I think they will actually spot him at the 30, so a gain of nine for Hunter. Well, they're getting in pretty big chunks now, Boots, six, seven, eight, nine yards. Uh, I think what you I said a while ago is the determining factor. This offensive line has just taken over this football game. Yeah, in fact, uh, Stephenville, uh, did trail as the clock ran out trail 12 to nothing so this uh, they're going to let it go out here so they have now scored 29 points in just two quarters Stephenville will go to the fourth quarter we thank the folks at Texas Bank for sponsoring the third I'm interested in college football. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, after, especially when you get to the playoffs, watch a little college football, watch the uh, Yellow Jackets. Sundays are pretty boring, aren't they? <laughs> Boy, Cowboys. It is second and one, and Browse is in shotgun, giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter finds a little bit of a seam or does not. He does not get back to the line of scrimmage, or does he? They give him no forward progress at all. At so. the 30, so it'll be third down and one. I have a feeling you'll see hammer time here. That play took a little bit of time to develop, and it gave that very quick Hershey front four. Time to uh, close in on the play. As a matter of fact, lose. They're outside the 30-yard line. So it's third and a full one for the Jackets. Third and one for Steamville. Gets in a power set formation. Bryles is under center. Handing off over the right side. Hunter finds the first down and gets to the 25-yard line. Credit the right side of the offensive line. Man, they just cannot stop this offensive line right now. It was Doty. I believe the Doty brothers were on that right side. No, Collier and Doty were over there on that particular play. Keggins and uh, Collier on the right side right now. And uh, the two Dotys on the left, Van Haddam in the middle. Well, I believe Jay Doty might have been pulling on that play because I saw him on the right side of that play at the end of it. So it's first and 10 for the Jackets at the 26-yard line of Hershey. Steamboat leading by 10 at 11.06 mark and counting of the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Now Hunter the tailback comes in motion to the near side. Bryles under center, giving the ball to Haney. No, Bryles on a keeper. Cuts inside to the 20, almost to the 19-yard line. A pickup of about six for the quarterback. A good fake as he gave the ball to Haney, or he faked the ball to Haney. And they're starting to respect that now, are the Hershey Huskies. And because of that, it's, it's clearing some stuff for Bryles, who did not have that available to him at the first of the game. This memo to the red and blue, you better fashion your chin straps because it's coming right down your throat the rest of the next 20 yards. So, second down and four for the Jackets on the 20-yard line stripe up Hershey. Bryles under center. Once again, Hunter behind him. Hunter will take a pitch to the left side. Hunter trying to get to the outside. He will get to the 19, 18, 17, maybe the 16. It is almost the 16, the spot, and that's very close to the yards he needed for the first down as he went out of bounds. They will mark him right at the 16-yard line. It is third down, third down in inches. Well, what a great stutter step there by Zach to get him an extra two, three yards to really close to that stick. Really froze the cornerback who had a little bit of an angle on him. 
and that's the ability of a, a guy like Hunter that can cut back on you. You've got to respect that, or you know, and then uh, and then be able to just sprint right out to the sideline. Third down and less than one for Stephenville, leading 29 to 19 over Hershey. The ball is just outside the 16. They need to get to the 16. Haney, the one back in the backfield. He will get the ball and go over down to the 13-yard line and will pick up the first down. You see that Sterling Doty had nobody to block. No <laughs> fired out. There was no one there. There was nobody there. He just ran down the den and bumped into a guy. I mean, they are just blowing holes open now. T minus 14 yards in county. <laughs> well, they'll spot him down at the 14, but that was plenty for the first. First and 10 for the Jackets at the 14. And you look, if you look at the Hershey sideline and the players on the field, it's now the hands on the hips and feeling a little bit dejected. This, well, this is what we talked about, you know, at halftime. When would it kick in? Sterling comes out. Jackets hurry to the line. Plows under center. Delay handoff to Hunter. Yeah. Flags down. Hunter will go to the outside and will cut up down the 10. Keeps powering his way to the seven yard line and There's more flags flag. comes down late. What was that flag? That was from the uh, back judge. Who was in the end zone and there was no one around him but Logan Sanotsky. And well, and, uh, a defender was back there. Right. But as far as for Stephenville, that was interesting. This might be two different penalties as yeah. late as the last flag was dropped. There's one flag at about the 14. I think there was a procedure that would be the first one on Stephenville. But I don't I have no idea what that last one was. Referee will uh, come to the home side. It is holding against Stephenville on one of the flags. Well, that was a quick hold. And then dead ball, face mask against Hershey. So you, you will get the holding call at the spot of the foul back 10 yards, and then you'll get the personal foul 15-yard penalty after that penalty is marched off. That guy must have just reached out and grabbed Logan or something when he was back in the and, end zone. And Logan was 20 yards away from the play. That is just, that's a, that's a bad play for the for Boy, Hershey. And the Hershey coaching staff really wanting an explanation here. Okay, the spot off will come at about the 12-yard line. So they will mark some positive yardage on the carry. Let's see. They'll spot it at the 13. So one yard of positive yardage, and then they'll back up 10 yards to the 20. Three. Three yard line, and now add what, five. Five, or is it 15? Is it the five or the? I think it's only it five. is the five yard variety. So they'll move the ball back to the 18 yard line. Yeah, With 10 cool. minutes remaining in the fourth quarter from Shotwell, Weatherford has now scored 21 unanswered points, and they lead Brownwood 42 to 35. Wow. How weird is that? So now, being it uh, that should still remain first down, referees are still deciding on what to do about this play, as well as we are. <laughs> Okay, the ball will be spotted at the 18-yard line. No, they were caught the 15-yard variety. No, I'm even going to change that again. Half the distance to the goal on the 15-yard. Dead ball, personal foul. All right. Somebody told the official that he did not call it that way the first time. So he did not get uh, that word from his coach's boy Hershey's not going to like this. And instead of getting 15 yards, they get seven and a half with half the distance to the goal. So that spots and the ball first down. at the 12-yard uh, line. Well, that's interesting because that's not really half the distance. That was only 10 yards marked off. It's either got to be five or 15 or half the distance, which is seven and a half. They I gave 10 yards. First, first down at 30. <laughs> Once again for Stephenville. Pitch to the near side. Hunter trying to get to the corner. We'll get to the 10. Run out of bounds. That's about the five-yard line. So a gain of eight on the play. And it'll be second and two from the six. Well, where were they spot at the five? That's almost a nine-yard carry. Smithwick now in the uh, game on the offensive line for uh, Stephenville. It is eight on the carry. It'll be second down and two from the five-yard line of Hershey. Let's see who how else is in there. Keggins. How much Smithwick. time was left on the clock when they started this drive? It was in the third quarter. Yeah. We pitches. So this drive has taken almost seven minutes. Browse under center sends Hunter in motion to the far side. Haney the one back behind Browse. Haney will take the handoff to the five-yard line. He will get about a yard inside the five, about a yard short of the yardage needed. So it'll be third and one for Stephenville. Let's, let's see, on the right side, it's Keggins and Smithwick. It's Van Hattam in the middle. Um, and then the two Dodies on, on the left side. Ball is spotted just outside the four, and they've got to get to somewhere around the three and a half for the first. So the only change is the Collier is out right now, and they're going 
with uh, number 74, Ron Smith. Penny at the fullback, Hunter, the tailback, Browse under center. This is a double tight end look. Now they'll split receivers to both sides. Browse will just shoot forward, and a flag comes down, and he may call Browse on sticking his head a little bit forward in motion before he got the snap, and if that is the case, that is horrible because instead of a first down, it'll now be third down at about six. Illegal motion against Stephenville. That's a tough break right there. Instead of first and goal, it's a three. You're right, it's going to be back at about the nine-yard line. It's going to be a long third down. How many third downs have we had on this drive? Man, this has been, as you said, it's been a long drive. And they've converted a lot of third downs along the way. Five of them. This is over a seven, almost seven-and-a-half-minute drive right now. Third down and a long six needed for the Jackets at about the nine-yard line of Hershey. They've got to get almost to the three. Browse in shotgun, sends four receivers to the right side. Browse in motion, takes the snap, rolling out, looking, still looking, going back against the green, caught by Douglas, touchdown at the goal line, yes! Uh-oh. <laughs> what a great read by Kendall. Waited and waited, TJ cleared at the goal line, he found him and then took the step into the end zone for the touchdown from <laughs> nine yards out. Stephenville extends now 35 to 19. The extra point upcoming and you heard my first homerism of the year with a yes call. Hey, John Cameron, number six, was lying on the ground by Kendall. He's the one that came up and tried to tackle him. Kendall stopped, jumped up, threw it, and then turned around the camera and said something would be interesting to know. Hey, by the way, we just scored. Even Elsa getting set for the extra point. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way. It is up and it is missed it. Who even Nelson pushed that one to the far side, so it stays 35 to 19 at the 8-13 mark. points for the Stephen Yellow Jackets as they extend now 35 to 19 at the 813 mark of the Techstar Ford fourth quarter Johnny that was 18 plays 75 yards took 743 off the clock Douglas that nine yard fast reception eight, from Bay. 18 plays I don't know if I've ever seen an 18 play drive for Stephenville. High pooch kick is taken at the 25 yard line, up to the 30, across the 35, the 40, now to the 41 yard line where he is tackled that last is scoring, Michael Peterson. Excuse me, that last scoring summary brought to you by the Lupies on the south field. Let's go down the sideline to Steve Ross, and uh, Stevie, it was tight for a long time on the sideline. Have things eased up just a hair? Well, Boots, I think they have it. Just the way John Hollinger called it before going into the second half. And you may look back and see that this play turned on the defensive hit by Cal Dilson. So that seemed to really fire up the defense. And from that point on, it's been all Stephenville. All righty, first and 10 for the Huskies at their own 41-yard line. Jared Franklin under center. Pitch to the near side is Robinson. Robinson will be hammered at about the 46-yard line. And Harmon coming down the line to greet. Reggie Robinson after about a five-yard gain, but hammered him at the end of the play. By the way, Boots, 285 yards rushing for the Jackets in this ballgame. Hmm. Yeah, you remember it was at the uh, at the 122 mark of the second quarter when they went down and scored on four plays. Hershey went up 19 to 15. Then since then, it's been all Stephenville. Second down and four for the Huskies. 7.24 and counting here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Rolling out is Franklin, looking to throw. Throwing out in the flats, has the receiver, it's caught. Coming back for the football was Courtney Smith and he goes down at the 29-yard line. Pretty good coverage by Stephenville straight belts, but he did not look back quick enough for the pass. 22-yard completion, and is that the first completion? No, it's the second completion of the game for Franklin who is now two of seven for 28 yards. Well, that's a big play for them. They needed, they needed a little some kind of a momentum. They trail by 16. Very important Steve will miss that extra point because it keeps it a two touchdown lead for Hershey if they get two two point conversions. Franklin on a misdirection gives the ball to Smith. Smith will be tackled at the 29 yard line. The reverse nets about two yards. Gordon Carroll coming back to make the tackle. 
really uh, playing good assignment football right now are the Stephenville Yellow Jacket defense. They're really staying at home and uh, keeping those, those misdirections inside of them. 6.38 and counting. Boy, this could be one of the fastest moving football games we've seen this year. Second down and eight for the Huskies. Franklin again in the center, two backs behind him as he sent Smith in motion to the near side. Franklin, play action, throwing out in the flats, has the ball knocked away by Gunner. Great defensive oh, oh. play to interrupt Reggie Robinson from making the catch. He knocks him away from the football. Great timing by Gunn. It'll be third down and eight. I think Brady's all right. <laughs> what a big, de that's two big defensive plays that Gunn has made in the secondary. And uh, What an athletic a move that was to go over the top of Robinson without touching him. And look at the coaching staff from Hershey who takes the timeout to scream that they felt like it was interference. Oh, Third no. and eight. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Stephen Mill 35. Hershey Huskies 19 back right after this. Big play here for the Hershey Huskies. Third down and eight as Stephenville looking to hold to reserve a 35 to 19 lead right now. 6.21 to go. Franklin under center, straight drop. Now rolling to the far side, looking to throw out in the flat. High over the head of the intended receiver. Not a good throw from Franklin. Man, that was ugly. So it's now fourth down and eight. And Johnny, this play's probably the ball game for Hershey if they do not convert. Uh, obviously, they know it. <laughs> they went seven minutes without stop touching it last time. With only 6-16, they know the coaching staff from Wichita Falls knows what's coming. It's a long, just punch it down your throat drive in this Steamville offense, and there's going to be probably some fresh legs on the field when they come out there as well to just uh, rub it in their face. You asked a question during the timeout, Booth, about 60 yards of total offense for Wichita Falls in the second half. Fourth down and eight for the Huskies. At their own 29, they must get to the 21-yard line. Franklin under center. Making the reverse is Franklin, looking to throw, going out in the flats, it's incomplete. In front of the intended receiver, Robinson. Great pressure was being put on Franklin by Gordon Carroll, causing to throw a bad pass, and the ball will turn over on downs to Stephenville at their own 29-yard line at the 6-11 mark of the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stephenville 35, Hershey Huskies 19. Pretty good, darn good football team, isn't it? I mean, it really is. You know, we talked about the beginning of the third quarter the adjustments that the Stephenville defense could make in second half. They've done it and then some. They gave up two, excuse me, 146 yards rushing in the first look, half. Look at the offense. Did you see the offense in the huddle? They're jumping up and down going, let's go. Let's get <laughs> another ball. Riles under center, two backs behind him, handing off up the middle is Hunter. Hunter gets to the 33, a gain of four. It'll be Man, second and six. I don't know that I've seen that in a while out of a team late in the ball game. They're, they know they've got this one in hand. This game was, uh, in my mind, it was over when Stephenville went up 35-19. I think it's now officially over after that defensive stand. I mean, there's a lot of football that you left to be played, but Stephenville has just totally dominated this ball game. Second down and six for the Jackets, and they take their sweet pretty time, if you will, as they'll take most of the 25-second play clock to allow the game clock to continue running. We'll be under five and a half when Kendall snaps the ball. Second and six. Play action. Riles coming back, makes one man miss, not another. Steamboat tried a little bit of the bootleg, if you will, as he faked the dive and then countered out. Riles will just get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down at six, and Hershey will take a timeout, I believe. The coaches were wanting one, but Hershey will not now take it, so we'll keep it right here. Third down at six, be under five minutes by the time the Jackets snap the ball again. Kendall now with uh, 98 yards rushing, Zach 117. That puts uh, Zach up close to 1,300 on the season and puts uh, Kendall close to uh, 900. Quads to the near side, one to the near far side. Browse is under center. Giving the ball on the trap is Hunter. Across the 35, across the 40, makes another and miss to the 44, and a first down for Stephenville. That time, breaking tackles with Zach Hunter on the 10-yard run, and you could see that the Huskies are just not making the same tackles they were at the beginning of the game. Who was that slow getting up off the carpet? Was that Cameron again? Number six? Yes, it was. Yeah. He's limping going back. Well, that should just about do it here. Uh, Stephenville, well, they need one more first down, I guess, since uh, Wichita Falls does have two timeouts. 
Matt Van Haddam, the center, yeah. comes off the field limping, and that is not a good sign because that is not a guy that usually rotates in and out. We'll have Steve Ross go and find out what the status is of Matt Van Haddam, the center. Inside trap handoff to Skywalker. He gets to the 49-yard line, a gain of six on the play. Of course, that moves Sterling Doty over to uh, center. The center. And that moves Smithwick in uh, as well. There's the timeout. Hershey takes the timeout. 4.08 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Signal 35, Huskies of Hershey 19. Back in one minute on KSCB. Second down and four for Stephenville. They'll spot the ball oh, around the 49 of Stephenville. How many timeouts remaining for Hershey? One more timeout for the Huskies. 4.08 to go in the game. Stephenville 35, Wichita Falls, Hershey 19. Browse under center, two backs behind him. Browse under center, giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter will be stacked up for a loss of about a yard. It'll be third down, and I believe Hershey will take their final timeout. Will they? Yes, they do. 3.57. Well, they've not stopped the clock yet. 3.54, 3.53. No one has stopped the clock yet, so they will not take the timeout. Boy, Hershey coaching staff was begging for a timeout for the players, and they do not call it. It is third down and about six needed for the Jackets. 3.38 and counting. Why would they not burn it there? I don't know what you're saving it for. Growls under center sends Hunter in motion to the far side. Giving the ball to Haney, he has the first down inside the 45 to the 44. The big fullback, Derek Haney, the six foot, 210 pound senior, has had a well of a ball game. That will be the seventh carry of the game. Nine yards on that carry, and he has, excuse me, that's not the, uh, Haney continues. That would be three and seven, 10 carries, 83 yards for wow. Derek Haney. On 10 carries? Three minutes remaining at Shotwell Stadium. Weatherford 42, Brownwood 35. Ooh. Pitch to the near side is Hunter. Hunter cuts up. Check that. That is Wooten in the ball game. Wooten takes the ball down to the 40, a gain of four. Second down at six for Stephenville. Josh Wooten's first carry of the game. There's those fresh legs we were talking about. And, uh, well, they're trying to get the official hurry up and wind the clock to Hershey. Uh, coaching staff. He's not going to change it at the end of the game. Well, he's been doing it all day, I promise. Two and a half is counting in the Techstar fourth, fourth quarter. Well, if they hold us here, they're going to have to burn their timeout. Second down and six for Steve Browse under center. Once again, two backs behind him. Giving the ball again to Haney. The big fullback rumbles down to the 35-yard line. A pick up of five more yards. He may get 100 yards today if they keep this up. Oh, they're going to mark it back at the 35. So five five yards, five. 88 yards now on 11 carries. That's a swift eight yards per carry average for and, Haney. And those have been big carries, Boots. You remember the, uh, of course, the big was a 30, 37 yard one that uh, really put uh, Stephenville a chance to uh, get into the game and, and then take the lead. Well, one more first down and Stephenville will probably start taking these. Browse is under center, the two backs behind him. Give again to Haney. Haney powers his way to the 32-yard line, giving three more yards and another first down for Stephenville. That stops the clock momentarily as they set the chains. That'll put him at uh, over 90 yards in the ball game. Give it to Derek. <laughs> we want him to get 100. 136, they had counting here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. That's now 125 for 100, 98 for Bryles and 91 for Haiti. Only 60 yards of offense for Hershey in the second half. Wow. 118 and counting, Browse under center. Pitch to Wooten, Wooten coming to the sideline. Gets to the 30, gets to the outside 25. Keep the clock running, there A you pick go. Pick up of seven for Wooten to 25 yard line. Now they're gonna burn the timeout, Wooten. Will they take it? They will. Hershey takes a timeout with 59 seconds remaining in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Steve will 35, Huskies 19. Back in one minute on KSTV.
the offense doing the jump up and down in the huddle thing that Johnny loves so much. Second down and three for the offense, just inside the 25-yard line. Handoff over the right side is Wooten. Wooten gets inside the 20 to the 19 to the 18-yard line, and another first down for Stephenville. Ooh. Well, that, uh, that'll do it. You can take a knee now. Wolfric Friendship right here against Stephenville next week, 1 o'clock Friday afternoon and I don't think it's uh, too much to say that Steamwell has never played a Friday one o'clock ball game before. Yeah, really. Well, it's a year first. First time to play at Birdville Stadium. First time to play in August. Might as well play a Friday afternoon at one o'clock. You bet. 34 seconds and counting and Bryles will just take a knee on this one I'm sure. Kendall will go to a knee. 28 seconds and counting and that will do it. Final score today from Texas Stadium as they counted out 20 seconds. 